Guys, welcome to another episode of The Pulse. You know what we do, we're talking to people who are doing cool things. Tom Green is here. It's the strangest thing. Like Because of your shows and your background, I'm talking about you and I kind of felt like, I mean, look over, because anything could happen. <laughs> no, 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 Just I'm just having my morning coffee here and uh, happy to be here. Nothing crazy is going to happen, nothing crazy. No, it's uh, good to see you, Bill. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, I appreciate you coming in. Yeah. Is that an odd response? Like something crazy is going to happen. Uh, well, you know, people that watched my show on MTV growing up probably, you know, were used to seeing me doing a lot of uh, crazy stuff, and then I still, I still do. But uh, you know, it's more uh, um, as a stand-up comedian, I'm more kind of, uh, you know, being a little more wacky and crazy on stage and not necessarily showing up and painting the studio plaid or anything like that. So <laughs> none of that yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. I'm waiting to see if somebody mm -hmm, comes mm -hmm. in. It could happen, yeah. So tell us about your background. How'd you get into doing all this? Yeah, well, I started doing stand-up comedy when I was a teenager and uh, in Canada, and uh, I really loved performing, and I ended up going to broadcasting school and learned how to operate cameras and edit video back in the 90s, and that was before we all had cell phones and and before podcasting, and uh, and I really got into sort of making independent media. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's what led to the Tom Green Show. Got picked up by MTV in uh, 1999 after I'd been doing it on a public access station for years up in Canada, and uh, just kind of changed my life. You know, the, the show was seen all around the world, I, and I uh, got to make some movies. I lived in Los Angeles for 20 years. I just, just moved back to Canada, and I got a farm, and I'm a farmer now, but that, that's how it all started. It's gone you're, full circle. You're a real farmer, or you're a farmer for a TV show that uh, you're doing? Well, no, I'm a real farmer. I'm farming radishes, so that's pretty good. <laughs> I've got a mule. Uh, I've got chickens, I've got eggs. So that, that uh, means it's, you're a real farmer. Yeah, I'm a real farmer. Yeah, I'm a real farmer. No, I'm kind of getting into it. It's a, it's a fun uh, new chapter in my life. And uh, and I am doing a TV show about moving out to the country and living out in the wilderness. And it's a, it's a, it's a good time. A lot different than Los Angeles. It's different out there. I'd imagine from living there for 20 some odd years to going to the farm is a yeah. huge leap. Yeah, you know, well, I always felt a little out of place in Los Angeles, even though I lived there for 20 years. I grew up in Canada, in the city of Ottawa, and, uh, and you know, you're a lot closer to nature out there. I always like going fishing and being out in the wilderness and things like that. So, so uh, moving home, it feels a lot more normal to me. I feel like nowadays anybody can start a podcast. Anybody mm -hmm. can kind of start a show and, and roll with it. Yeah. When you first did it, it was kind of, it was innovative. Like people were not doing that. It was a public TV show that then expanded and grew to MTV. So what inspired all of that? Like you had to be truly innovative at that point to do it. Well, I just wanted to, I wanted to do a television show. I was a huge fan of David Letterman. There wasn't really any pathway to getting a TV show or a comedy TV show, uh, you know, where I lived. So I just decided to make my own show. Now anybody can do that and you can, uh, you can go get the technology and the cameras and everything in a box and set it up in your house, but you still have to do something that people want to watch or want to listen to. So that's, that's I guess, the big challenge today. It's not necessarily getting the microphones and stuff like that, but it's, it's more about uh, figuring out how to make an interesting show that you're going to get people tuning into. So, so was that just you? Uh, was MTV crazy or is that... That's you. That's what you wanted to do. Like uh, yeah, show Jackass I, I mean, before Jackass. I loved outrageous comedy, like you know SCTV and Saturday Night Live and Monty Python and and all sorts of things that were out of the box. I, uh, and uh, so uh, I just I wanted to make a really wild and crazy show, and we did. And and that that was part of it. You know, it was it was unlike anything people had really seen at the time because it was before reality TV and mm -hmm. and a lot of these kind of crazy shows that you see now on TikTok and. People doing pranks on their parents on TikTok now. We were doing pranks on my parents back in the 90s. So. Yes, you were. My parents are happy that I'm back home, though. They still talk to me. Okay. Yeah. So that's positive. Yeah, yeah. These, these are good steps. Yeah, they still talk to me. Do you allow yourself to, to recognize that you were kind of a trailblazer in all of this? Like, that's pretty significant. It's cool. You know, it's... Uh, it's uh, I've, I've, always, I've always looked to technology as a way of kind of uh, finding a way to be creative and do things that aren't being done to be... A, sort of find what the latest technology is. You can go yeah. in and shoot video differently or make radio differently. And, and uh, that's what I'm doing now. I've moved out to the middle of the wilderness and I'm doing a TV show with, you know, the cutting edge, uh, um, you know, cameras and using really great uh, 
you know, technology that's allowing us to make a really beautiful show out in the middle of nowhere. Coming up next, Tom Green shares his take on his new show. Let's just say it's unique. Fanny is this huge, huge mule who uh, I, I'm riding. She won't turn left, so I just have to go spin around in circles. I basically spin around in circles till I get dizzy and then we stop. So you're farming? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, I have you a, a farm. I have a farm and I have some Show animals. I have mule. a mule. Really, I'm more learning to ride this mule. You know, that's the thing. She's it's, it's, mule, the Mules are really interesting animals. You know, they. People say stubborn as a mule. It's not, right. It sounds, it sounds, it's, this sounds really crazy to you, right? Because we're in Philadelphia though, right? There's not right. a lot of people riding around on mules down here. But, no. But it's, it's actually probably one of the most normal things that I've ever done, to be honest with you, getting a mule. I, I believe that. Yeah. yeah. But that's not necessarily, that's because you've done some might crazy be, stuff. It might even be one of the most normal things that you would have ever done. To ride a mule? Well, a farming, living out in the country. It's not, it's not a weird thing, you know? You're, you're, okay. You're, I see you kind of acting like it's really weird to live on a farm. No, I. It's not that weird. I mean, there's people I think farm. It's, it, maybe it's weird that I'm farming and riding a mule, <laughs> right, but that lots part. of people ride mules and horses, and it's, a, it's, it's kind of a very traditional thing. I guess that's what's funny about it, because that's me doing it, but it's, it's not weird. I'm not weird, you know. I'm not weird for riding a mule. That's not a weird thing, Bill. I'm not weird. It's, it's different. I'm not weird. It's different. different. Maybe different for me and you, but I mean, lots of people ride horses. They and do. Stuff. It's a normal thing to do. They do. It's the most normal thing and I've ever done. Farm radishes. It's the most normal thing I've ever done. And, and everything else. <laughs> so what are we going to see on this shockingly normal show? Uh, well, it, you know, a lot of it's about about me kind of adjusting to this new lifestyle. Well, and, why do you have to adjust? It's normal. Because I don't know what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> so... Yeah. So abnormal for you. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so we're yeah. going to get to follow this journey. Yeah, no, it's fun. And my parents are in the show, and they're, they're excited to have me back. But, no, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of a neat uh, uh, docu-series, I guess, about me adjusting to this new life on the farm and getting to know this incredible animal, Fanny, who's this huge, huge mule who uh, I, I'm riding. She won't turn left, so I just have to go <laughs> spin around in circles. I basically spin around in circles till I get dizzy, and then we stop. But... Um, and then I have my dog, Charlie, on the show, who's always with me. Charlie, come here. The Charlie smooth here. segue. Charlie. So Charlie walked in I, I, with I love Tom. animals. Charlie is a rescue from the Bahamas. Charlie was just sitting yeah. here chilling. Yeah, and she's, um, she's, from, um, she's from the Bahamas, and uh, she's traveled all around with me. We're on tour right now. I'm performing this weekend, and, or this week, at uh, hey. Helium Comedy Club. And uh, yeah. I've just been on a month-long tour. Uh, you and Charlie just, just traveled? Driving around the country, going show to show. Driving around my Ford F-150 pickup truck there, eh? We're getting her done, Bill. And uh, and uh, just just jumped out in the truck at the farm and just drove down, crossed the border at Detroit. Left went the down, mule, but grabbed Charlie. Flint, and Michigan, Hobart, Indiana, hitting all the hot spots. You really do just kind of hit the road and go. Yeah, the mule is not on tour with me. She's no, a little, Charlie's I bring, I bring Charlie, but the mule is 1,400 pound uh, yeah. uh, animal. But, You'd have uh, to ride her Someday, on tour. someday I might like to bring You're her on take stage her on tour? with me. Yeah, maybe go play a county fair or something like that. <laughs> so. But, uh, but no, I'm, you know, I've been doing stand-up, like I said, since I was 16 years old, but I've really been touring you know, almost full-time for the last 15 years or so, and okay. uh, performed uh, all over the world, really. I've performed all over probably every English-speaking city in the world, and uh, also other places as well. I've been in, done shows in, all throughout Europe and Asia, and uh, I've got, it's a kind of fun thing about the show on MTV. It's uh, given me this worldwide audience, and I get to see the world and tell jokes and do what I love, so it's a lot of fun. When we come see your show, mm -hmm. so... Be in uh, Jim Thorpe, uh, Pennsylvania, Newtown, Pennsylvania, and uh, uh, Saratoga Springs, New York. That's the end of this tour. Then I'll be up in Canada. Uh, I'm doing uh, shows in Ottawa. I'm doing a, uh, filming a stand-up special at the National Arts Center there. Do you still love touring? I love it, yeah. I love doing stand-up. I, I love the art of doing comedy and getting up on stage and being in front of an audience and making people laugh. It's, it's why, I got, why every comedian got into this business. Probably we were all struggling class clowns at one point who were desperate for attention, and then we found a way to get it by... And get uh, paid for it. And get paid for it by becoming a comedian, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So what do we see? What what's a Tom Green comedy show look like? Well, you know, it's uh, it's it's pretty high energy show, but I talk about all sorts of uh, you know different subjects from social commentary to to just talking about my life and uh, uh, you know I'm inspired by you know so many of the great comedians that we all grow up with like uh, you know George Carlin and Richard Pryor. I'm just kind of uh, doing my version of of uh, stand up comedy, talking about what I find funny and. Uh, 
and uh, having a good time with, uh, with, with, with the folks. What do you think about that, that comedians now have seemingly a kind of tighter constraints on the things that they can do, or do they? I don't really think they do. Um, I think, um, you know, comedy's always been about pushing the boundaries. I mean, I haven't heard of any stand-up comedians getting arrested for a comedy routine, like, right. like Lenny Bruce was arrested and famously, uh, you know, uh, for, for something that he said on stage, or, you know, the Doors were arrested at a concert for something they did on stage. I haven't seen that happen, so I don't really know that there is cancel culture as far as content of, of stand-up right now. Um, you can't really get canceled anymore for saying something on stage because there's just so many outlets. I mean, you don't have to necessarily, mm -hmm. might not necessarily uh, work within mainstream media if you're saying completely uh, unhinged or, 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 or things, but uh, you can still always go find your own audience. And uh, <laughs> I, I, people, people want to see somebody get up on stage and, uh, you know. Uh, so it's not something that you have had to seemingly in your career, but even now, it's not something that you've had to consider. You just keep doing it. I, first of all, I don't think that, I mean, that's, that doesn't really have to be, I think, the, the motivation to get up and say something that you're not I allowed Charlie, to say, right? Yeah. I feel like yeah. we need a... Oh, yeah. Charlie now is just a good chilling girl. over. It's, Charlie's a service dog. Yeah. Are we allowed to pet Charlie? Yeah, you can pet Charlie, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think, uh, just because, because people can be sensitive today on the internet and have issues with what this person or that person might say. I don't think that really necessarily has to be the motivation of a stand-up comedian to get up and try to say something that is going to offend people. I think really the goal of stand-up is to get up and make everybody laugh, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's my uh, that's my you know desire when I do stand-up. I'm not, I'm not trying to go up and make people upset or anything with what I'm saying. Right. I'm trying to go up and have a good time, and we're going to have a fun show, and everyone's going to laugh and. <laughs> and be uh, normal and and, and uh, yeah and, and and have some fun so now some people do want to get up and just shock and try to push the boundaries politically or socially and you know I, I'm kind of a more doing something that is uh, just fun and outrageous next on the pulse you never really know where things are headed with Tom Green now get you up on the mule there yeah <laughs> I, now I feel bad that I haven't ever been on a mule. Yeah, or a horse. Have you ever rode a horse before? I have been on a horse. I did not solo yeah. ride the horse. I was kind of led around like you know, yeah. a Philadelphia guy who has no idea what they're doing. That's pretty much what it is. I shudder to ask this next question because the answer could be anywhere because we know you got a mule in a show like that. We're traveling. You've done pretty much everything. Yeah. Continue to push the limits. Is there a, a what's next that we could talk about? I'm afraid of what the answer might be. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just really enjoying what I'm doing now. I mean, I'm, I'm settling into this amazing property that I found, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm uh, touring, doing stand-up, and I'm uh, growing my production company in Canada. I'm producing three projects right now as a director okay. and producer, so just probably uh, watch for more television shows and, and, and more stand-up comedy from me, and, and I love what I do. I'll, I don't have any intention to slow down so so uh yeah just keep keep an eye out and watch for me on amazon prime this year it's gonna be a lot there's a documentary as well coming out that i'm directing about the history of the tom green show kind of covering some of the stuff that we've talked about here today and it's we're going back through all the archives of 30 years of uh of video and uh, making this feature length film about uh about the history of all these crazy uh, videos that I've made all, over the years. I feel like that's going to be a really good watch. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, yeah. It's Maybe very... we could come out to the farm and interview you when that comes out. Yeah, if you want to, we yeah. Can, yeah. We can Absolutely. meet everybody out Get there. Get you up on the mule there. Yeah. <laughs> you I, now I feel bad that I haven't ever been on a mule. Yeah, or a horse. Have you ever rode a horse before? I have been on a horse. I did yeah. not solo yeah. ride the horse. Right. I was kind of led around like yeah. Uh, Philadelphia guy who has no idea what they're doing. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. That I mean, horse uh, is in inner city Philly. It's like yeah. an urban cowboy story. There you go. Maybe you should get a horse. I, <laughs> Why don't you get a nice horse? Ride into work every day, come into Fox on a horse. That'd be cool. That would be something. That would, that would stand out. People would talk about that. It'd probably be good for ratings. And then tell everybody you got the idea from me. The, little, we could both just keep it'd be great, growing. Yeah. I like Charlie it. Charlie is completely unfazed by yeah, everything that goes on. She's chilling. She's just chilling. sitting there chilling. 
coming up. Showing his cancer surgery on TV was arguably a first for a comedy show, but he's proud of the impact it had. I've had lots of, uh, you know, teary, uh, you know, meet and greets with people, with men and their wives who say, you know, they're alive today because of that special that we did on MTV. At some point through your career, you wrote, you wrote a book, you wrote books. Yeah, All right. Book, yeah, yeah. Um, you were very public with with health issues that you had at mm -hmm. one point, mm -hmm. um, talking about all of those things. Um, why? Like when you're out there having kind of fun with it and talking about these things, but you also shared really personal stuff about yourself. Yeah, well, I had testicular cancer when my show was on MTV, and it was uh, the reason why the show stopped. Actually, the Tom Green show was you know a hit show on MTV, and then I got cancer and had to go deal with that for about a year and. And uh, that was when we stopped the show. And, uh, and uh, you know, it was, uh, we made a television special about it. And young men who were watching my show are the people that are most susceptible to that. So the highest curable, most curable form of cancer. So I thought it was a, a good, uh, a good uh, thing to do. And I, I have actually probably, I have had hundreds, I wouldn't say thousands, but hundreds and hundreds of people have contacted me online or come to my shows. and you know, young guys who saw that special and went to the doctor, got checked out and diagnosed their cancer because of it. And I've had lots of, uh, you know, teary, uh, you know, meet and greets with people, with men and their wives who say, you know, they're alive today because of that special that we did on MTV. So it's, it's, been, it's been very, uh, uh, you know, fulfilling kind of thing to have done that. It wasn't necessarily something that I, um, you know, anticipated that that would have that much of an impact but but uh, you know we were on t we were on MTV at the time we were doing documentary type comedy mm -hmm. I had the whole crew there I was always sort of pointing the camera back on my own life anyway so we just uh, followed through and did did that uh, last show that was the last episode of the Tom Green show was my was the cancer special and pushing those boundaries ended up helping a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. We end every episode of The Pulse with the concept of use your voice for good. Yeah. That's the theme of the show. Okay. You've talked about some of the different things that you've already done, uh, but when you hear that phrase, what does it mean to you? Uh, well, I mean, I do think it's nice to try to create some sort of a positive impact with, with your comedy. I mean, I think most comedians I would say, if not all comedians, certainly most comedians are venting their frustrations with, with the world and how they see it. And uh, I think probably a lot of us are motivated by the idea that, you know, you might make people think differently about the world and make a positive impact of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that's, that's, I think, in some ways what comedy has always been about. It's about make, you know, shining a light on something, maybe people la making people laugh at things that are sometimes uncomfortable subjects and uh, and then maybe uh, giving a new perspective so absolutely I like it I appreciate you taking the time out thanks Bill awesome good to be here I'm green on the pulse get on that horse guys thanks for watching another episode of the pulse today with Tom Green it's funny just sitting talking to him the things that he's done the experiences that he's had and just the funny way he shares everything I had fun. I hope you enjoyed it as well. As is always the case, you can check out the entire interview, all places where podcasts are available. Just subscribe and you'll get a notification whenever a new show comes on. Also, you can go on to the app on streaming TVs, Fox Local. All of our shows are there right at your fingertips. A great way to catch up on so many things that we are doing here on The Pulse. And you can always hit me up on social media at Bill A. Fox 29. I leave you today as I always do, reminding you whenever you can to use your voice for good and have a good one.